Hey, it's Joel, the 3D printing nerd, and look what I've got here. This is the Wanhao Duplicator i3 3D printer, and I'm going to tell you what I think about it. You ready? Go. Ah, there you are. So I've got two new video lights. If there's too many shadows behind me or you can't see my face, just let me know. I'll change it for next time. But more importantly, here it is. This is the Wanhao Duplicator i3 3D printer. Right now I have it loaded with Matter Hackers PLA and I've accomplished a few prints on it. So I can tell you kind of what I think. First off, let me tell you about the printer. The control box is right here. And this knob on the front selects settings from the LCD here. The printer has a nice steel frame. The build area is eight inches by eight inches by seven inches tall. It's got a 0.4 millimeter extruder right here, and it'll spit out 1.75 millimeter filament through an MK10 nozzle. It'll print any filament you throw at it. If you go look on the website, it's got nylon and, and, and semi-flex and ninja flex and ABS, and you could probably melt car tires down and send it through there if you could, if you could get it tiny enough. The build quality on this printer is fantastic, and I'll tell you why. It was in three pieces, the gantry, the bottom section, and the control module here in the box, and I was able to put them, get, put them together rather effortlessly. However, if you watched my unboxing video, you're going to see that the documentation left a little bit to be desired. I did contact Wanhao, and I talked to my contact there who said they aim to get the printer into the hands of experienced beginners. So while I was unboxing the printer as a complete novice, that isn't their core demographic. I should have been able to, and I knew how to, fix the printer. And fix the printer I did, and I got some prints on it, and here's how this review is going to go. You're going to have two questions for me, no doubt. You're going to say, hey, does the printer print? And then you're going to say, hey, should I buy this printer? Well, let's take care of the first question right now. Does the printer print? Yes, absolutely, right out of the box. This printer makes spectacular prints, absolutely stunning prints. The first print out of the box is this hand doing the okay gesture, and you print it with the included sample of filament that you get. Mine was a, a light blue, baby blue, but you look at this model, and the detail is stunning. Right there. That printed out. That was my first one. It took a little bit to get there, but I was able to get this printed just fine. Next up, I printed this calibration cube, and I printed this little triangle guy. You'll notice with these prints, the calibration cube has a dent in it, and that's because uh, it was still warm and I squished it with my fingers. Sorry about that. This little pyramid guy turned out pretty well. There's some layering issues here, and his feet, his feet are kind of hollow, and the infill didn't take. These were example settings that, that I was using with this. I have since refined the settings, and I'll show you here in just a little bit. This model is decent, but it does show signs of needing some different settings on the printer. The next thing I was able to print was this little red Pikachu, and I printed him with Colorfab Red PLA. The detail on Pikachu is fantastic, and for such a small model that's actually hollow on the inside, the print strength is good. The nozzle laid down the layers in a, in a way that, was, that I don't usually see on something this cheap. It's smooth. It's smooth on the sides. It's fantastic. Hi, Pikachu. Pika Pika. If I was going to print Pikachu, I should probably print another Pokemon, so I printed this guy. I believe this is Charmander, and he's hollow as well. I sized him up 300% in Simplify 3D, and I printed him. My settings were spot on. The sides are smooth. He's hollow as well, and he fits on the build plate just like that. The last test print I did was this Bender Red Bull Koozie. Yes, this is my design, and I printed this to see how it did with smooth sidewalls, how it did with dimensional accuracy to fit the Red Bull in it, and just to see how the filament looked after it, after it came out of that extruder. First of all, it's smooth. The print quality on this is amazing. I've, I've yet to see this model printed in such fine detail. Is it dimensionally accurate? Let's check. Here's the koozie, here's the Red Bull, perfect fit. With this print, just like with all RepRap printers, when the, the bed is moving, you will notice some, some ghosting around the sides where the vibrations from the movement of the bed translate into slight, slight errors 
in the print. It's nothing to be worried about and it's far less than most other printers I've ever seen. It's a high quality model and the printer did an amazing job. Well, that's great, Joel, you say. I've, you've shown me these things that you've printed and it looks like it does an amazing job, which it does. What don't you like about the printer? Ah, let's do that. First and foremost, let's start with the control box. On the side right here is the micro SD card and the USB port. The USB port plugs into the laptop and every, every other time Simplify 3D will recognize and connect with this printer. Online in certain groups, they will tell you that there's a reset jumper that needs to be pulled. I didn't do that because I wanted to test this as stock and so the connection to my slicing software was about a 50-50 chance. As for micro SD, well, I, the only other micro SD card reader I have is my GoPro and I used that to transfer some files to the card. Wanhao included a micro SD to SD card adapter, however, that didn't function properly. According to the i3 community, there are certain ways to circumvent this. You can get a micro SD to SD reader adapter that will plug in and a ribbon cable comes out and you, actually, you can actually use SD cards. Uh, I, would, I would recommend getting that. As for the printer itself, my main concern was the build plate and it staying level. And this is where most of my problems came about and I'm still having problems to this day. The build plate itself, once leveled for a model, doesn't seem to stay level and I have to re-level the build plate in between each model that I print. I don't think it will continue to be like that because I think it's just getting used to the heat difference in heating and cooling, heating and cooling, and eventually it will calm down. I've also heard in the community that installing glass will alleviate some of these bed leveling adjustment issues that I've been going and fixing. The bed is leveled using four screws, two up front, two in the back. An issue there is the screws aren't held in with a nylock nut. So when you turn the wing nuts to adjust the bed height, the screws spin at times, causing it not to adjust properly. And it's hard to judge at that point. The wing nuts themselves are sometimes hard to grip. There are aftermarket prints you can print to make sure that the wing nuts are easier to turn. I suggest you do that. The only other major issue I had with this printer is the extruder and not being able to change filaments reliably. I'm serious. Every time I had to change filaments, I would preheat the extruder. I would push through five to 10 millimeters of filament and then I would pull the filament out. Once I go to put the new filament in, it's stuck. And it seems to be an old piece of the filament is at the top between, between the entrance to the nozzle and, and the cold end where the gear is. It, there's a piece of filament that just sits there. I'll take one of the included small Allen wrenches. I'll push down on the lever and I'll shove it down which will usually clear it out. I have had to take this apart because of a nasty clog that, that that didn't solve, but it's really easy to do. And I think that over time, I'll probably get the process down and I won't have to do this. However, with all of these prints, anytime I had to change filament, I had that issue. All right, you've seen the prints. I've talked about this printer and you've seen and heard what I don't like about this printer. So the question is, should you buy this printer? And that's an absolute resounding 100% yes. This printer is an amazing piece of technology. It's built tough and there is a vast community of people who love this printer and print all sorts of modifications for it, whether you need to stiffen the gantry or add things to the wing nuts to make them turn easier or shoot, there's, there's bearings you can buy for the, for the, for the x-axis to make it slide easier. It's, it's, it's astounding. The community for this printer is wonderful and this printer is increasing in popularity like crazy. The main reason being you get all of this for $399 US. I'm not joking. It's $399 for this printer. You get a heated build plate, an 8x8x7 print area. You get a 0.4 millimeter nozzle. You can, you can feed 1.75 millimeter filament through and it'll print all sorts of filaments. You guys, this is, this is a fantastic printer for a fantastic deal. There are situations there 
where it won't work quite as well as you want it out of the box. But like they said, their target audience is, a, is an advanced or an experienced beginner. So they're gonna know that all of these modifications you can print for this printer on the printer itself will just make the printer better. I can't recommend this printer high enough. This printer is incredibly affordable. At $399, you can buy, you could buy five of these instead of an Ultimaker. I know Ultimakers are good printers and they have decent print areas and owning an Ultimaker isn't a bad thing because they're a wonderful company that make a wonderful printer. But if, if your budget doesn't allow you to buy an Ultimaker, don't feel sad. This printer is well within your budget and you'll have no problems with it. Plus, if you need any help, you will have an entire community willing to help you get this printer printing as best it can. There you go. That's my Wanhao Duplicator i3 printer review. I know it's not a typical review. It's not a technical review on certain things, but, but I, I told you what I like about this printer. I told you what I didn't like about this printer, and I recommended this printer as a printer you should buy because it's extremely affordable for what it does. Plus, look how well it printed this koozie. I'm gonna drink my Red Bull. That tastes like being awake. Well, that was it, you guys. That's my review on the i3. I hope you really enjoyed it. Look, like this video, give it a thumbs up if you think it was valuable. Share it with your friends if you think they might find it useful or if they're in a market for a duplicator i3 and they'd like to learn more about it. Leave a comment down below if you have any further questions about this device and I'll, I'll do my best to answer them. I'll put a link down below where you can get this from Wanhao USA. I, I can't say enough good things about it. Yeah, there are some negatives, but the positives far outweigh it. Uh, thanks for coming along in this little adventure. We'll see you guys next time. As always, high five.